Good morning, and I welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ to church this morning, and it's so good to see so many more of you than last week. It's nice to see us building up, and nice to see some of the children back this morning, and uh, I pray that we will all uh, remember to keep safe, keep our masks on, and thank you also to the COVID screening team who are signing people in and making sure that hands are sanitized, etc., I invite us to open with prayer. Loving God, thank you for bringing us together to worship you here this morning. We thank you for those people who are sitting around us, and we thank you for those who have joined us on Facebook Live and will listen to the recording of the service. We ask that each of us, however we experience this time of worship, will be aware of your presence with us. We thank you that you have loved us and invited us to this time of worship. And so we pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to praise the Lord, we confess our sins, and I invite us to pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against all people, in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. I invite us to listen to the Lord's Prayer as it is sung in this Corsa, and if you want to sing with, sing with, or uh, just pray silently in your heart.
Amen. It's so good to have uh, the worship team back, all with our masks on. And uh, when we sing, we know it feels a bit like you're going to swallow your mask or something. But uh, keep your masks on. Please don't sing too operatically, uh, because then you might blow your mask off your face. But we stand and we sing, as the deer pants for the water. And this is in keeping with our theme at the moment, which is about talking to your soul. And this is from Psalm 42, where the psalmist speaks about how his soul is longing after God's presence. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You desire and I long to worship you. I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and seated. I'm so excited that I didn't have to sing solo. I feel alive again. <laughs> it's really good. So over the last, uh, last week we were talking about talking to your soul and we're going to continue it this week. Um, so last week I think I skipped ahead a bit. I talked about questions to ask your soul. But then I, I forgot, maybe if we're going to be talking to our souls, we need to, I don't know, establish an attitude first or introduce ourselves first. Maybe we were a bit forward last week. So if I was going to start again with the sermon series, I'd start with this sermon and then preach last week's sermon next week. But I'm not going to repeat it. You can watch it on YouTube and Facebook and all those fancy things that we can do now. Anyways. I thought that Ephesians 4, 29 to 32 would be a good place for us to start. Let's listen. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger 
and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, we pray. Amen. So I've noticed that the psalmist sometimes talks to his soul, has a bit of a conversation with himself. And I notice that I talk to myself quite often. I suppose you all talk to yourselves, unless maybe I'm just the kooky one. But I realize that sometimes my talking to myself is something that I'm not very conscious of. And so in my conversations with myself or my soul, I tend to be a bit badly disciplined or unaware, and I sometimes do myself some harm with the ways that I speak. I like the way the psalmist in Psalm 42, and that's the one with the as the deer pants for the water part, asks himself, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Why is my soul disturbed? Why is it upset? Why is it depressed? Why is it feeling so broken at this time? And the honest truth is that sometimes we just feel that that brokenness and that sadness. And then I turn to Psalm 139, which gives us some advice for questions to ask of our souls. Is there any offensive way in me? Know my anxious thoughts? And then lead me in the way everlasting, these prayers to pray. But I realize that as I ask these questions to my soul, I'm not in such a good relationship with my soul that I, that I get answers very quickly. But also, maybe I just need to be patient. This past week, as I've been thinking about the sermon series, I've been asking myself, what are my anxious thoughts? What are my offensive ways? And how can God lead us in the way everlasting? And yesterday, I was just, I was feeling that, that anxious kind of feeling that you get when you're feeling stressed. I don't know how to describe it. I feel like my blood is carbonated or something. And I realized that maybe that was my soul answering me as I realized some of the things that I was stressed about. And I was praying about this and I, every year around this time I tell you my grapevine is alive and I celebrate because because I think it's died. And then I looked at my grapevine yesterday and there's a little, little bud coming out, you know, a little green shoot. And I remember Jesus saying, I am the vine, you are the branches. And suddenly after looking at that, I just felt this kind of peace as I felt that Jesus spoke to my soul in that little in that, in that moment. And I felt like everything was going to be okay. We're not very good at that inner conversation, and it's quite difficult. But we need to learn to talk to our souls. And I think the beginning of that conversation is to listen to some of the advice that Paul has for how we talk to each other. Because often we are really mean to ourselves but we've learned to be kind to others. So in the morning, you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, oh, your hair, how could your hair look so horrible today? Or, oh my goodness, I didn't know you had five chins. I don't know what you say to yourself when you look in the mirror. But you wouldn't say that to somebody else, would you? You wouldn't go up to somebody and say, hey man, your hair's looking terrible today. But we're so, I don't know if we're honest or critical of ourselves that we forget to celebrate what's good. We forget to say to ourselves what's positive and helpful. And so in Ephesians 4, 29 to 32, as Paul speaks to the Christian community about how to talk to one another, he reminds us to speak in ways that are positive and helpful. And then on in 5, verse 19 to 20, 19 to 20 Speak to another with one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We were just talking about somebody, I was chatting to Pat at the beginning of the service, about somebody we knew who, who you would always say, how are you? And they'd say, I'm blessed, even though they were going through terrible things. And sometimes when people do that, I've got to admit, I get a bit irritated because I think it's a bit preachy, you know? 
But I've realized that I actually need to think that of myself and say that of myself too. I am blessed. When you ask me how I am, I'm sometimes like, oh, I'm fine. Or, you know, how's life going? And I'll say, it's going. But if I verbalize that conversation, I say, I am blessed. I'm declaring something that I know to be true. I feel blessed. I know that God is good. Maybe I need to speak those positive and healthy words into my heart. Paul says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. In another translation that works a bit harder at, at really capturing the Greek, it says, no rotten word must proceed from your mouth. And it makes me think of that image of the, the rotten apple spoils the whole bunch. And we tend to universalize our bad words that we say of ourselves. So I, I'm quite aware, you can remind me, I don't mind, of my failures and my inadequacies. You all know, you all, you all have your struggles, hey? But I think one problem that we have is that we let one failure, one, one bad day, one bad moment, rot all of our thoughts about ourselves all day. So I know I'll get grumpy. I, I'm very weird that way. I'll get grumpy in the traffic. I won't even cut somebody off. I'll just get grumpy. And I'll have a bad thought about somebody. And that'll sort of define my whole day. I'll feel yucky because I felt angry. I need to learn to, to not keep dwelling on something that I felt was bad or unfortunate need to not let that rotten word that I say to myself about myself saying, oh, Gus, you're so mean, oh, Gus, you're, you're a failure, or, or say I forget something or I drop something or I let someone down. I tend to make that thing all about me. No rotten word. Don't speak rotten words into your hearts. Don't speak rotten words to each other. I also know that sometimes when I feel inadequate about myself, I, I adopt these I really should sort of statements. So I'm thinking I really should pray more, I really should work harder, I really should be kinder, I really should eat less, etc., etc. And instead of, it seems like a good thing to say to yourself, doesn't it? I mean, I really should pray more. But if you turn it around, what you're actually saying is, I'm, I'm an inadequate prayer. If I'm saying I really should work harder, I'm saying I'm a lazy worker. Really should just puts a kind of angle of pressure on you, a kind of angle of inadequacy on you that, that you shouldn't really take on yourself. Instead of really should, say to yourself, I'd love to pray more. Don't attach that judgment part to it. That speaks about how inadequate you are. If we're all inadequate. That's fine. But say that positive angle, I'd love to pray more. I'd love to be given the grace to work harder. Talk to your soul in that gentle and helpful way. Paul goes on to remind us to always give thanks to the Father for everything. Talk to your soul in that grateful way that says, I'm grateful that I get to work today. I'm grateful that I get to pray today. I'm grateful that I get to eat today, giving thanks for what you got. And maybe on those horrible days when things are just difficult to deal with, try to give thanks for the difficulties because when we adopt an attitude of thankfulness, we start to, I don't know, feel more capable. God, this is a gift that you've given me. A gift and a chance for something new, something better. I like the way in Ephesians 4, 29, that Paul also says, but only what is helpful for building up, building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. A lady called Erica Spiegelman writes a book about your, your way of thinking called The Rear Wired Life. She speaks of globalization in our thinking. 
We use one incident to create a global statement about yourself in your life and your life in error. So one little failure pervades everything, and you start to think that everything is a total disaster because you've been a disaster in one area of your life. As Paul talks about talking to others, he's telling us you don't actually have to point out everybody's faults all the time. You're very aware of all our faults, aren't we? But if there's a moment when something has come up, take that moment to speak what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. The same way, speak to yourself. Yes, you've got thousands of things wrong with you, but you can't deal with all of those things today. What is the problem that you're having today? And have that conversation with yourself about that specific thing. Don't think all the other disasters in your life. Deal with one at a time. And speak to yourself in a way that helps to build you up according to your need in order to bless yourself, to grow yourself a little more. At the end of Ephesians 4, 32, Paul says, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. And I don't know if it's naughty of me, but what if I was to change that, to talk about how you speak to yourself? And I'd say, instead of be kind to one another, say, be kind to yourself, forgiving yourself, as God in Christ has forgiven you. And you realize as you read that, as you think about that, that God doesn't speak to you in the same disrespectful tone that you speak to yourself. God has taught us to speak to ourselves with a word like, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Remembering what Jesus has done, how much love Jesus has poured out for you on the cross, and with that kind of love on our hearts, we can start to learn to be a little kinder to ourselves, accepting the gift of Christ's forgiveness of ourselves, learning to be kind to yourself, forgiving yourself as God in Christ has forgiven you. So in Ephesians 4, 29 and chapter 5, I think that was verse 20 or so, Picked up some values for the ways that I speak to myself. Healthy words, not rotten words. Helpful and needful words that aren't just every problem I have with myself, but the thing that's affecting me today that I need to deal with. Speak kindly. Speak with compassion and forgiveness and thankfulness, because that's how God has treated you. Be kind to yourself, forgiving yourself, as God in Christ has forgiven you. As I go on to think about the ways that the psalmist speaks, the psalmist, a few phrases that he has to say for himself, awake my soul. I like that. We put our souls to sleep. Sometimes we ignore them so much. Awake my soul. Be here, be present. We sing the song often, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, and don't forget his benefits. A reminder to the depth of your being to remember all the good that God has done. Psalm 146, verse 1, Praise the Lord, O my soul. And I think my favorite one so far, Return, O oh, my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. That's a, a verse you should memorize. Maybe at the end of each day as you're ready to go to sleep and you might be running through all your failures of the day. You might be running through all the anxieties of tomorrow. Instead of going through all that, make that your 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 motto, return O my soul to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. 
Uh, as a family, we watched a TED talk about mindfulness. And we make this joke, but it's really worth looking up. Um, I think look up TED Talks, mindfulness. This lady talks about talking to herself. And we joke because she says every she learned that she should once a day put her hand on her heart and say, Shauna, that's her name, I love you. So we all joke about I said say to my son, Shauna, I love you. <laughs> Sorry, Zach. <laughs> a reminder to to remember the love that God has for us. And to remember the love that you should have for yourself. Because God has loved you. God in Christ has loved you. We're so, we feel a bit guilty about loving ourselves, don't we? We feel like we should deny ourselves, and that's true in some ways. But we can't do that properly unless we realize the love that God has for us. So, you might be a bit awkward saying your name, I love you, as you put your hand on your heart. I want you to put your hand on your heart if you feel comfortable, or even if you feel a bit uncomfortable. And say your name, God loves you. Angus, God loves you. I didn't hear you guys. Angus, God loves you. I'm going to go one, two, three, and then you do it. And not Angus, but your name, hey? Huh? One, two, three, Angus, God loves you. I heard you, John. <laughs> John, God loves you. It feels weird to do that. And, and maybe you need to do it every day when you wake up in the morning and remind yourself, I am beloved. And it's one of the biggest moments in, in the ministry of Jesus when he's baptized. God says to him, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It is a foundation for Jesus to know that he is beloved, to do what he has to do. God Dare you think that you can go through your life without knowing that you are beloved. You're not as clever as Jesus. You are God's beloved. So I invite us, be a little kinder to yourselves. And then, if we're kind to ourselves, it'll overflow into our love for others too. And so we sing the hymn, It is well with my soul.
Let's lift up our prayers for those around us and those in need. Lord God, friend of those in need, your son Jesus has untied our burdens and healed our spirits. We lift up the prayers of our hearts for those still burdened, those seeking healing, those in need within the church and the world. Take a moment in silence to lift up your prayers for those around you, for those in church with you this morning, for those you know who are going through difficult times. pray together. Hear our prayers that we may love you with our whole being and willingly share the concerns of our neighbors. Amen. If you'll join me with the words in yellow as we give praise to God. We praise you God for the world which you created and for our place in it. You have given us life that we may love and serve you and though we have resisted your purpose and misused your gift, you have not left us in our sin, but have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. We thank you that for us he became human, died on the cross, rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven. There he reigns in glory, and there he prays for us, and we believe that he will be our judge. We thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to bring us to a new life in Christ and given us freedom to call you Father. Therefore, with all the church on earth and in heaven, we give you our thanks and praise. We dedicate ourselves to you. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to do your will and bring us with all people to your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we come to a close, I invite us to stand to say the grace, but also, although because of COVID, we can't pass around the offering, offering plate, if you would like to make an offering, there's a little church at the back um, in the foyer. 
but also we prefer it because of the problems of, of COVID, et cetera, that we give by EFT. And so we dedicate our offerings and then we'll say the grace. Loving God, we stand as a sign that we know that all that we have comes from you and all of that we have we give to you. So Lord, take our offerings of money and use them to build your kingdom here in this place, but more important than our monetary gifts. We ask that you would take our hands and our feet and our minds, our mouths and our eyes and use them to build your kingdom in this place. Help us as we have learnt to be kind to ourselves in order to be kind to others. So we pray for each other as we say, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. And it's so good to see the kids here. We're going to have to work out how to do some Sunday school because I'm sure that'll be lots of fun. And we're just saying that we're missing the, you know, the vibey songs on a Sunday morning too. We'll work on that. God bless.